Love it or hate it, indoor training is unavoidable for many of us if we want to maintain our training when the weather is less than desirable outside. But what should you wear for indoor training? I mean, the clothes that we normally wear for cycling are designed for the outdoors, but wear the same clothing indoors and you could end up overheating and potentially hampering the quality of your session. So today I've enlisted the help from our friends and partners of the channel, ASOS, for our guide on what to wear for indoor training. Firstly, we want to consider the environment we're in. Now, obviously we're indoors, but what's the climate and the temperature like? Well, today I have the luxury of riding in this purpose-built gym, but like many, I'm normally jumping on my turbo in a very cold garage. Now, you want to be warm to begin with, so it might mean opting for some extra layers that you take off as you heat up. Either way, as time goes on, we begin to sweat, which is our body's reaction to the heat and its attempt to cool down. We're essentially bringing the body's heat to the surface of the skin in the form of perspiration, which is fine when we're riding outdoors because the air flowing over us helps to evaporate and remove the sweat. But without that circulation of air, the sweat just builds up, your body continues to heat up and you won't cool down, which is why we normally recommend the use of a fan for indoor training. But why not take this one step further and consider your clothing choices? Even with a great fan setup, you're gonna to struggle to fully replicate the outdoors in terms of removing the sweat and keeping our bodies at an optimum temperature to perform. So we wanna to look to clothing that's gonna help wick the sweat away from the surface of our skin and allow our bodies to cool. Now this may sound counterintuitive, particularly if you're used to wearing nothing on your top to help keep yourself cool, but I am in fact suggesting you wear a layer to help cool yourself more. So for this, I'm using a mesh-like base layer. This helps to pull the moisture away from the skin and into this next layer. It's lightweight, it's seamless. I may as well not be wearing anything on my top. I don't really notice it, but it's helping. In fact, by having the sweat in this next layer and a fan blowing cool air over its surface helps to cool me further. Now it's worth noting that they aren't turbo training specific base layers. They're actually designed for riding outside on the road under a jersey but they do lend themselves nicely to indoor training as well, which is convenient. We can wear them for both. Unfortunately, we know what to expect from riding indoors. It's not gonna change from day to day. So we're looking for the lighter and more breathable clothing options. And most brands actually design clothing for the different seasons. And in this instance, I've opted for the summer range from the ASOS layering system. Essentially a guide on what to wear with different combinations of clothing for the different seasons and climates. And on that note, some athletes actually use indoor training to acclimatize. So if you're planning to race abroad in a hotter climate, you can actually start adapting to those conditions from your own home. So whereas we've been talking about keeping yourself cool, you actually want to increase your body temperature. So perhaps reduce the amount of fan use. In some cases, athletes actually increase the humidity in their training room. Now all of these should be increased with time gradually, but a good starting point is with your clothing. By using this layering system that most brands have adopted for the different seasons, you can start adding garments bit by bit. So the obvious starting point is to use a short sleeve summer jersey, it's lightweight, it's breathable, but it's still an extra layer that's gonna increase your body temperature. And then if you like, you can advance this. You can move to something that's warmer, perhaps less breathable, or even move to clothing that's designed for a different season. Aside from the base layer, it's worth considering your short choice. Now it's a fairly obvious one, but padding in shorts is so important, and I'm sure most people aren't avoiding it anyway. But Due to the nature of indoor cycling, you don't get that let up or freewheeling like you do outdoors. So you do feel 
the pressure of the saddle a little more. So make sure you've got some well padded cycling shorts so that you're not experiencing any discomfort and hampering the quality of your sessions. Now I'm a big fan of bib shorts for cycling outdoors. They help to keep the shorts up, they help to keep the shorts in place, particularly for longer rides. But you could argue that this is an extra layer on our upper body that adds to the heat. In fact, I would often pull my bibs down when I'm riding indoors. After all, when we're riding indoors, we often ride for less time, we don't move quite so much, so the chance of our shorts actually moving or falling down is far less likely. So another option to consider is a pair of well-fitted half shorts. In other words, a pair of regular cycling shorts with padding but without the bibs. They'll work in a similar way, but they'll just have a supportive waistband that will help to keep the shorts in place. We tend to think of indoor training as a fallback from training outdoors when the weather isn't suitable. And with that, we're not always prepared for it. But by being prepared, it's not as unpleasant as people think. I'd actually say it's a hugely beneficial training tool and many professional triathletes are proving this. If you have a good setup and you're wearing the right clothing for it, it's actually quite an enjoyable thing. You can really take your training to the next level. Now, if you'd like to see more videos from GTN, you can click on the globe and subscribe. If you'd like to see our how to choose an indoor turbo trainer video, just click down here. If you'd like to see a session to do on the indoor trainer, just click down here.